Beardo Benjo. Cap, that ship's not ready for flight. Why is it moving? Someone's initiated the security protocols. The Chimera's autopilot has taken over. You'll need backup. We're heading back. Negative. Secure the bridge. Those weapons can't get into the city. Copy that. You're up, Bruce. Yeah. <sighs> Hello there everyone. I come to you today as a man who loves Marvel. I really, really do love Marvel. Everything Marvel. Be it the movies, be it the comics, be it the games, most of the games, some of the games. I just love Marvel. I really, really do. But I'm also a person who's exceptionally skeptical and apprehensive about the newly released Marvel's Avengers game. Now the reason I'm apprehensive and the reason I'm skeptical isn't just one thing. It can't really be boiled down to one point. This game has been tarred with a huge amount of controversy before release. Whether it's the Spider-Man exclusivity, which I think is awful, is my honest and own personal opinion. I hate it. The £10 per post-launch character battle passes that unlock costumes and name tags and additional gear which I also think is awful. Uh, it is just abhorrent amount of microtransaction shoveling into a game. Whether it's the corporate tie-ins from companies like Verizon, is it? Um, and Virgin kind of putting their corporate costumes into the game. Uh, it feels like a very AAA product. It feels like a very marketable money-making AAA product. And hey, there's nothing wrong with that. The games industry is a business and it is there to make money. That is the primary goal. For me as a consumer, I want to have fun. I want to enjoy a product, uh, get a great story, invest my time, and what I get back from my time is fun and, and enjoyment, uh, escapism. I think the commercial side of it, in this instance, is a little scummy and a little terrifying. There's a lot of it, it is quite overwhelming. So going in, I am quite apprehensive. I also played the beta. Now the beta didn't set the world on fire for me. The beta was, for me personally, and this is all personal opinion, the beta fell flat for me. It felt like a mindless button masher. I didn't feel powerful, especially when I played as the Hulk and I was being challenged by tiny little robots it didn't feel it didn't feel great it felt boring it felt like a slog apart from that first initial bridge mission that felt absolutely fantastic that's what i wanted from an avengers game and they nailed it with that opening mission it was everything that came after that just fell flat for me it didn't feel great to play it did feel kind of boring my attention kind of waned and, and it didn't hold me to the end i didn't complete all the content the beta had so that gameplay experience from the beta, paired with my feelings around the Spider-Man exclusivity, the multiple battle passes, the corporate costumes, the microtransactions, the live service way this game is being built, those two things added together made me exceptionally worried about this game. But as a Marvel fan, and as a complete sucker, I bought it anyway. Because I want to find out for myself, and I don't like to judge things on just a beta um, or just a demo this is a property that I care about I care about these characters and I would love a fantastic Avengers game I genuinely would so I bought it and today I've played three hours almost on the nail three hours so far and I just wanted to sit down and kind of open up my brain not scripted just talk for 10 minutes about what my feelings are about the game after the initial three hours of the game and whether I think it's better than the beta, whether I think it deserves the flack it's had in the run-up to launch, uh, and whether I think my opinion will change as I play another three hours, another three hours. I might do a couple of these videos, but for now, this is my initial impressions of Marvel's The Avengers after three hours of gameplay. Where to begin? Now, I said this isn't scripted, and it really isn't. I have no script. I'm just going to talk and see where it goes. 
my initial impressions after the first three hours are very positive, which I'm very surprised about. I genuinely am. I'm having a much better time with the game in its fully released format than I did with the beta. And my worries about microtransactions and the battle passes, etc, etc, and the commercialization of the game hasn't come to the forefront just yet, but I'll touch on that in a little bit. Let's just talk about the game for now. Let's talk about the gameplay, because that's really what I want to focus on. The finished product that I'm playing right now is obviously a far better representation of what the game is than the beta was ever going to be. Betas and demos are tricky. I respect companies that put them out because it's good to let your consumers go hands-on with the product before they spend 50, 60, 70 pounds, whatever it may be for a finished product. I do respect that. But they're also dangerous because they might paint a bad picture of your product or a great picture of a boring product by just picking the right mission. And Avengers, for me, the beta painted a boring picture of what so far has been quite a good product. The story so far is very tight. In the beta, we saw the bridge mission, and that was packed with fantastic set pieces. It really felt like it was pulled straight from an Avengers movie. And then the missions that proceeded felt kind of really slow, sluggish, button mashy, and just kind of bog standard brawlers. It felt like a bog standard brawler that didn't really do anything different in that genre. And I felt like it missed out on a lot of opportunity to add set pieces and kind of really flashy, over the top superhero moments. The game itself, the full game, peppers in so far anyway, great set pieces and great kind of movie magic moments throughout, or it has done for the first three hours. It isn't just a bridge mission. As the game rolls on, there are some fantastic moments. Now, there's going to be a couple of light early game spoilers here, but there's a brilliant section where you're chased by the Hulk. Absolutely fantastic. Felt like it was pulled straight out of one of the Avengers movies because I know there was the part in uh, the original Avengers movie where Black Widow is running away, and it did feel very, very similar to that but I really enjoyed that. Uh, a great stealth section as Kamala Khan very early on that I really enjoyed. The stealth was a little wonky and you could kind of get past the enemies fairly easily, but it felt good. It felt cinematic. It felt like a great kind of jumping off point into the game. Um, it's, it's felt really solid. The combat has felt fun and engaging. Enemies feel like, and I don't know if this is a placebo effect, they feel like they're going down quicker in the game now than they were in that beta. In the beta they felt exceptionally padded and spongy and they took a lot to go down. I'm going through them with a far quicker pace in the main game and that's making for a better pacing in general to the gameplay experience. It's just flowing through much, much nicer. The combat feels good. There are set pieces that genuinely feel like they're pulled from Marvel movies and they keep the action entertaining and they keep it, they keep it spicy because you're not just running around smashing buttons, you're breaking that up with these great little moments that feel like they're pulled straight from the movies or straight from the comics. So immediately, the experience for me has been a lot better than what I experienced with the beta. It really is strange because two of these missions anyway, I played in the beta and that was the bridge mission and the first mission as the Hulk where you're running around in the desert looking for the aim base um, and you're trying to break in with Kamala Khan. I've played those missions already in the beta, but they feel somehow better here in the full game. It's strange. Whether that's the context of the game that they're sitting within and they make sense in terms of the pacing of the story, because the beta drops you into those two missions and it feels like they naturally follow on, but they don't. There's padding in between those missions that kind of brings you up to speed and, and it's nice to see the natural progression of getting to that point. It really does feel a lot more focused here in the in the main game and, and it's a pleasant surprise for me. So let's talk a little bit about kind of story and things. I won't go too much into kind of detail but the game starts uh, and it puts you in the shoes of Kamala Khan and she is a fantastic protagonist. I will happily play as her for the entirety of the game. I know you do switch and you play as different heroes but she's so well written and well voice acted and you can sympathize with her character immediately. She's a standout for me straight away from the first three hours. I understand why they've picked her, because she works as a fantastic mirror to the players, especially in the introduction level. You start the game in basically what I can only describe as a huge kind of Marvel theme park. It's Avengers Day, and you're walking through Avengers Day as Kamala Khan, and you're just looking at all this Avengers memorabilia. And as an Avengers fan and as a Marvel fan, seeing it through her eyes, you feel like you're her. 
because you're walking around and you're, you're looking at all of this kind of nostalgia and kind of nods to the comics and things that you can go, oh, that's that and that's that. And it, it just it's a genuinely great introduction to the game. It's slow. It teaches you the mechanics and it immerses you in that world and it puts you into the shoes of Kamala Khan. From there, we go to the events of the bridge incident from the beta, which we've all probably seen a million times now. And then the game escalates quite quickly. You do play as Kamala um, for the bulk of the initial three hours before taking control of the Hulk and, and Bruce Banner a little bit later into that time, around the two hour mark. But Kamala's combat, traversal, dialogue, she, she's fantastic. She's wonderful to play as. And this game is packed with incredible heroes and she stands alongside them shoulder to shoulder. And it's been a pleasure to play uh, as her for the first initial kind of introduction into the game. And I'm having a very good time with her. I can't wait to go hands on with kind of Iron Man and spend some more time with hopefully Cap. Spoiler alert, he, he dies very early on, um, which I'm sure we all know from the trailers and things. But uh, hopefully we get to play as him. I'm sure we will. It'll be mad if you don't. Um, it's, it's so far very, very good. The story is simple. You're pulled into this world where you need to kind of... The Avengers have, have been disbanded. Their name has been dragged through the mud. They are public enemy number one. And as the Avengers' biggest fan, you set out on a mission to restore the public's faith in the Avengers and rebuild the Avengers and, and help to bring them back to their former glory. So it's very easy to play as Kamala Khan because you yourself feel like that Avengers fan and you want to help those heroes get back to that place where they once were. So it's very easy to play from a fan's perspective, story-wise. Now, in terms of gameplay, it is quite simple. Don't get me wrong. Um, there is a skill tree that you can pump points into to unlock different moves and move sets and abilities. You don't get access to that until about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours into the game. You don't start leveling up at all until that point. I think they're holding it off until you've kind of got to grips with the story and the, the kind of basic controls and that kind of thing. But the gameplay mechanics are fairly straightforward. Traversal and beating things up, beating things up that get in your way. But the environments are lovely absolutely lovely to look at. I'll get onto graphics in a bit, but they're lovely to look at. So exploring them, traversing them, running around in these environments is, is great. The rooftops at the start of the game when you're playing as Kamala and you're heading to your own little secret base looks fantastic. Really, really nice. Um, Heroes Park looked fantastic. Obviously the bridge section looked brilliant. It does look amazing, but the gameplay really does revolve around get from here to here, beat up anything in your path. That's the gameplay loop. So three hours in, yeah, I'm still quite excited about it. I'm having a good time. I'm, I'm not burnt out on that gameplay loop. I don't know what I'll be like nine hours in, 20 hours in, because the gameplay loop is quite small. The combat is very simple, but it does feel gratifying, especially playing as the Hulk or Thor. When you hit something, you really feel like you hit something. There's a real nice thud and clunk to everything you do combat-wise. It feels chunky, it feels meaningful, it feels like you're dealing damage. The one thing I will say here is there's no real finesse to the combat. If you're looking for something a little bit like Batman Arkham, which I still think is one of the best examples of combat in a video game, Batman Arkham series, and even the, the Spider-Man, um, PlayStation 4 Marvel Spider-Man game, had a fantastic combat system whereby executing dodges at the right time and counters and mixing that with a little bit of stealth to slip away into the shadows and then kind of web people up or if it was Batman, kind of grab them up. That was the perfect combat system. Here, it really is hit those buttons until everything is dead. Keep hitting buttons. If things are still moving, hit some buttons. If so, hit buttons. There's no real finesse to it. The best example really I can give at this point quite early on is the uh, fight against the Abomination, which was in the beta. Um, I, I played it the same way the beta and full game. I just hit buttons. I just smashed the buttons until he was dead. Um, and, and that's a little bit of a shame. There is a dodge button, a double tap circle on, on, on PlayStations where I'm playing it, and you'll dodge roll away or dodge to the side, but it feels kind of inconsequential. You feel chunky enough to be able to take the damage and not need to use that. I've used it sparingly, but it doesn't really change up combat whether you're using it or not. I'm sure late game when things get a little bit tougher, I will need to use it. But at this point, it really is a case of run around and smash them buttons. 
but it does feel good. The characters feel fun to play. They feel fun to hit things. Hitting things is fun, which is good because it's 90% of the game. Uh, and it's a very simplistic gameplay loop, which for now, three hours in, is good. I'm having a good time with it. I don't know what it'll be like a little bit later down the line. In terms of graphics, I'm playing it on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Pro, and it looks pretty bloody good. Um, I've had no performance issues so far. I've had a couple of hitches and stutters when I'm loading into new levels and new locations, but that's about it. It's ran out of pretty solid frame rate constantly whether there's you know 20 enemies on the screen or no enemies on the screen and it, it looks really really nice the characters have got great facial animation the environments look pretty wonderful had a little bit of pop in a few times if i can get some clips of that i'll put it up behind me while i'm talking here but i've had a little bit of pop in but but again nothing game breaking and nothing that would pull me out of the immersion Overall, it is a very, very nice looking game. You can tell they spent a lot of time making this look almost like a strange kind of uncanny valley version of the cinematic MCU Avengers. They don't quite look like them, but they look close enough for you to, if you just glance, be like, oh, that's kind of, it's kind of Chris Evans, but it's not. It's, it's strange. It looks great. It looks absolutely wonderful. The game is a joy to look at. It isn't the best looking game on the PS4, but it's 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 up there with some of the best. It genuinely it genuinely looks really nice. They're, they're leveraging the power of the PlayStation here. Um, I'd like to see it running on PC. I'm sure it'll look even more incredible. Um, but yeah, currently playing it on PlayStation and I have no qualms with the way it looks. It does look very nice and performance wise, it runs very, very well, apart from a little bit of pop in and a little bit of stutter when I load into new locations. Okay, so I won't talk too much longer about this because I say I'm only three hours in and I just wanted to put my initial thoughts out there. This is really all this is, initial thoughts about this game. And I am having a very good time. Three hours in, I'm having a really good time. But I'll finish this video on my concerns, my sneaking worries and my creeping doubts. I've just reached a point in the game whereby certain things have unlocked and become available for me to view. The first of which is the hero card for my character. Now the hero cards are the battle passes. Now we all know what battle passes at this point. We've all seen Fortnite, we've all seen Apex, we've all seen COD, etc, etc. The battle passes for the initial heroes in the game are already unlocked. So if you're a player and you're playing now, or whenever you pick up the game, the battle passes or the hero cards for the initial characters, the initial heroes are all completely unlocked. You can level them up to level 40, which is the max, and you'll unlock all the rewards within that battle pass. Uh, costumes, name tags, emotes, all kinds of wonderful cosmetic things. I don't know how hard they're gonna be to, to level up. For all post-launch heroes, it costs 10 pounds for that battle pass. Each post-launch hero has one of these hero cards for themselves, and it will cost you 10 pounds. I really don't know how how hard they're going to be to get to the top. I haven't spent any time leveling up that hero card yet because I've only just been given it. I'm very curious to know how fast it's going to take me to get that up to the top. I have a sneaking feeling they're going to be very, very hard to level up to the max. The reason I say this is because you can skip levels. I've had a little look at it. To skip the battle pass all the way to level 40, it costs roughly 40 English pounds. So 40 pounds if you want to unlock everything in the battle pass without playing. Now, it might be easy. It might be a hell of a lot of grind. And I guess the argument here is you wouldn't buy the battle passes for those post-launch heroes unless you were going to play this game loads. You were going to play it hundreds and hundreds of hours and it was your favourite game ever. Now, the only reason I really bring this up is because this is the part of the game that doesn't sit particularly well with me. It's the part that feels specifically engineered to extract as much money from every player as physically possible. And the reason it feels like that is because that is exactly what it is. Um, I, have a, I have a sneaking suspicion that levelling up these hero cards is going to be difficult. It's going to take a lot of grind, a lot of online play, hours and hours and hours, hours of playtime. And I think for myself, that's fine. I'll ignore it. It doesn't mean anything to me. They are cosmetics that I don't need, but to a child who might be playing online with his friends, it's the new Fortnite thing. It's, if you don't have that cool costume, yeah, you're not cool enough. So then they're gonna start spending their pocket money to level up their hero card. And then when Spider-Man comes out, they need to buy his hero card because there's a costume in there that's really cool. And then a few weeks later, Hank Pym's coming out and they've got to buy that 
and then buy that. It's a constant cycle of money. It's This game wants you to be invested for years and years to come. And for me, it's fine. I can choose not to be. I can play it to its completion and say, ah, I had a good time with that. I'm done now. But you can see what it's trying to do. It's trying to get its hooks into a populace that's ready to spend some cash. And it's not doing it in a subtle way. The store is already live. Um, a legendary costume, for reference, costs about £10. So one costume in the store that's a legendary variant will cost you about £10 English. Pounds. Uh, a, a epic costume is about £8. And a rare costume is about £5.50, maybe £6. The battle passes are £10. To level them up to max is £40. You could throw money at this game if you wanted all of the costumes and all of the cosmetics. That's one of my worries immediately. And it isn't a worry for me personally. It won't impact me because I, I just will choose to not engage with it because that is how I will vote on that matter. I don't enjoy it in my games. I like to be able to unlock things and get content that I, I feel like I've already spent my money on it. I want to unlock things and, and feel rewarded for my purchase. I don't want to make more purchases on top of my purchase to feel rewarded. It, it feels strange to me. It's, it's alien, but I come from a time where I would unlock things in games. I would play them to completion to unlock new characters, etc., etc. So I won't engage with that. But that is one thing that worries me about the game because it does feel kind of specifically geared to be just... It just wants to take so much money from you. And it'll be interesting to see where that grows to. The second thing that worries me in these very early stages is the gear system is incredibly boring. It's very, very boring. If you've played Destiny, you already know the kind of system of pushing up your light level. You have a power level in this game and you push that power level up by equipping better and better gear. But the gear is all, it's all bones and guts. It's nothing that you can see on your character. So doing it feels, it doesn't feel fun. It feels unrewarding. It feels like a chore that you have to do to be able to progress. So I'm constantly going into the menu equipping new bones for the Hulk, equipping a new vest for Kamala because it's slightly better, scrapping the old one. And then I'll walk for another 10, 15 minutes and I'll find another vest that's better than the one I just equipped. So I go back in and I scrap that and I equip that. It doesn't feel fun because it doesn't change the way your character looks. And I understand why it doesn't change the way your character looks because that would then turn the cosmetic side of the game into a pay to win. They wouldn't be able to monetize it. If the gear that you equip was what changed the way your character looked, then they wouldn't be able to monetize it. The gear progression system feels a little bit boring. Um, I feel like I would start to completely just disengage with that very early on because it, it doesn't show you any tangible change to your character. Yeah, your power level goes up, but in Destiny and in games like Destiny, when you're pushing that power level up, your character's changing their appearance. They're getting a new gun that does new things, shoots in a new way your character feels like they're genuinely changing. Here, I'm putting on a new bracelet for Kamala, a new vest, a new pair of socks. Her power level goes up, but she doesn't look any different. And I'm just sitting there in menus doing this. And, and I want to spend as little time in menus as possible because that isn't fun. Inventory management is never fun. And at the moment, this feels like it's got quite a bit of it. Not too much that it's overbearing at this stage, but there's a little bit of inventory management in here that I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy the gear system. So, as a summary, three hours in to Marvel's Avengers, do I like it? Yes, I do like it. I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying the story. I'm enjoying the simplistic gameplay because this early on, it hasn't bored me yet. I'm having a good time running around smashing up robots. It looks stunning on PS4 Pro. I'm having a really good time looking at it. It looks really, really nice. The voice acting is good and I'm, I'm engaged. I'm having a good time. I'm getting set pieces, a little bit like the, the bridge mission, that feel like they're pulled straight from the MCU, and I'm having a very good time with it. Three hours in, I'm happy. My worries are this. I can start to feel the creeping monetization. It's starting to unlock things like your hero card is now unlocked, and I can see where you could spend money to level that up to unlock costumes and emotes and name tags. I'll be interested to see how long it takes to go up some of those levels. I really do feel like it's gonna be an absolute slog and I feel like it's engineered for you to want to spend money to level that up. As I said, if you wanna level it up from zero to 40, it costs 40 pounds and each character has a hero card. So when you play as Kamala, you are just upgrading and leveling up her hero card. When you then play as the Hulk, you're just leveling up his. 
they don't work as one constant thing they're all working on their own bit by bit as you play as each character to get all of them to level 40 i imagine will be an absolute slog and then you've got all the post-launch heroes who have their own hero cards for 10 pound a piece etc etc that for me feels like it's engineered that's where the engineered money part of the game starts to come into play it isn't a huge deal breaker for me because i just won't engage with it it's not something i'm interested in i'll unlock the costumes i unlock through standard play and i'll just enjoy the story but it is an, uh, a thing that's always bugged me um, and, and it doesn't sit right with me the way it's been kind of created i could be wrong when i come back to this in another three hours time who knows i might be burning through those hero card levels really quickly but i don't suspect so and the only other thing that's kind of worrying me about the game is is the gear system. It just feels a little boring because there's no tangible change to your character. You're just pushing a number up. It's just inventory management for the sake of in inventory management. And, and I guess to make it a live service game and to make it an RPG that you can play online and to stretch the game out across years and years of live service, they needed some kind of RPG-esque element. And it's just this just doesn't feel like the most fun way to do it. Going in and changing Hulk's finger bones and rib cage and you don't see any change, he just gets a little bit stronger in terms of his power level, I just don't find that fun. And I guess my third worry after about three hours of gameplay is how long will the simplistic gameplay keep me entertained? It has kept me entertained thoroughly for three hours. Will it keep me entertained for another three hours, six hours, ten hours, etc., etc.? I really don't know, but I will come back and I'll check in on it after a little while. If you ignore and do not engage with all of the monetization and the, the costumes and the selling of all the extra stuff, there's a game here that I think could be enjoyed by Marvel fans. Who knows? The first three hours anyway is a good time. We'll see what changes. I am open for things to go completely south in the next couple of hours. Let's find out. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a ramble and a rant. Uh, no script. Just me talking about a game that I've played this morning. So no real clear-cut direction to this one. I don't know how I'm going to edit it. We'll see. Hope you've enjoyed this rant. Um... I'll see you soon for another one. Don't forget to leave me a like, leave me a comment, and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Take care. I'll see you soon. See you later.